Okay, so we are we are back again. So this is another example, right? So this figure A, if that's actually figure, I'll show you. Figure shows the equivalent circuit of a single phase transformer referred to low voltage side of 200 volt. Let's calculate the terminal voltage on load that is on high voltage side, low voltage current and the efficiency right. So, in this problem one thing actually one thing is that the low voltage side is 200 volt actually high voltage side 2000 volt right, high voltage side is 2000 volt. So, it is not written here I have missed it here. So, high voltage side you take 2000 volt that means your that means your N 2 uh, by N 1 is equal to it will be 10 right. So, that because n 2 by n 1 is equal to v 2 by v 1 say. So, this will be your 2000 divided by 200. So, it will be your 10 right. So, based on that we will move. So, so this is the circuit diagram that rep it is referred to low voltage side. So, this equivalent circuit of this one for mathematical derivations we have seen earlier. So, this low voltage side voltage look at the cursor that to 200 volt. So, this uh, coal loss component resistance is given 400 ohm and magnetizing component it is given 231 ohm this is the current I 0 current flowing through this is I C and through this branch is I M. It is something like you are solving apart from this transfer issue and other solving like a series parallel circuit the way you have done it for single phase and this is R E 1 that is 0.1 ohm and X C is equal to 0.5 ohm and this is the current I 2 dash flowing in the your primary side and I 1 is equal to I 0 plus I 2 dash and this is that your 7.9 ohm resistance and 5.5 reactant that is that is that your what you call the inductive load it is referred to your primary side low voltage side and voltage uh, across the load is V 2 dash earlier you have seen is V 2 dash is equal to K V 2 we have already uh, so seen it for, der for our mathematical derivation right. So, all these parameters are given. So, we have to find out the terminal voltage on high voltage side that is V 2 then low voltage low, low voltage current that is I 1 and the efficiency right. So, that is the that we have to find it out. So, now I m is equal to it is a parallel circuit. So, I m is equal to 200 by 30 or 231 whatever it will come and I c will be your 200 by 400 right. So, this is a parallel circuit. So, I m is equal to 200 by 231. So, 0.866 ampere and I c is equal to 200 by 400. So, 0 0.5 ampere and we know that I 0 is equal to I c minus J i m right. So, it is 0 0.5 minus J 0.866 ampere. So, it is actually your I 0 is equal to it magnitude will be 1 and angle will be minus 60 degree ampere. Now, total load that your this side if you take to the total resistor the R e is given 0 0.1 and X c is equal to 0 0.5 ohm where here your R L dash 7.9 and X L dash 5.5 ohm. So, from the primary side that R total will be R E plus R L here I am taking R L right. So, 0 0.1 plus 7.9 8 ohm and X total will be X C plus X L just series addition. So, it will be 6 ohm therefore, impedance Z will be 8 plus J 6 ohm. Therefore, I 2 dash will be that V 1 the voltage you are what you call that uh, low voltage side this is the reference voltage you have taken. So, 200 angle 0 degree upon 8 plus J 6. So, it will come 20 angle minus 36.9 degree ampere. Therefore, I 1 is equal to first part I 2 dash plus I 0 right here in this circuit in this circuit here you apply your KCL I 1 is equal to I 0 plus I 2 dash right. So, your if you do so it will come I mean substitute I 2 dash and here it is I 0. So, it will become 20.9 angle minus 38 degree ampere right. Now, V 2 dash will be V 1 minus R 2 dash R e plus J x uh, your J into X e 1 that means, here in this circuit what you call you apply here here in this circuit you apply your this thing uh, your KBL right. So, in this case this is the current I 2 dash I 2 dash into your R e plus j x c and this is the voltage plus minus. So, plus v 2 I mean this is the voltage same thing this is the v 2 v 2 dash rather v 2 dash right. So, this is plus minus. So, plus v 2 dash minus v 1 equal to 0. So, you apply k v l same thing is uh, same thing we have applied there right. So, so that means 
that is v 2 dash is equal to v 1 minus your if you take i 2 dash into r e plus j x t 1 right. So, in that case it will become 200 angle 0 minus 20 angle minus 36.9 right into that your r e 1 is 0.1 plus j 0.5 if you simplify it will become v 2 v 2 dash will become here it is 190 192.5 angle minus 2 degree right and that will be magnitude of v 2 dash will be 192.5 volt. Now, earlier we have seen no, v 2 dash is equal to k v 2 and n 2 by n 2 1 I told you it is 10 because high voltage side voltage is 2000 volt I missed that one it was not written there. So, k is equal to 1 upon 10. So, k v 2 is equal to v 2 dash because v 2 dash is equal to k v 2. So, v 2 will be 192.5 volt right and your uh, your what you call that uh, uh, that angle of v 2 dash is minus 2 degree right. So, similarly your what you uh, this your uh, your what you call so magnitude of v 2 is 1, 1.925 volt and next is the efficiency. So, when we will find the efficiency right output is v 2 dash i 2 dash cos phi by uh, phi 2 right. So, v 2 dash your if you look into the circuit if you look into the circuit that cos phi 2 dash actually angle uh, be between the this the voltage v 2 dash and uh, difference of the angle uh, between the uh, your uh, angle of uh, i 2 dash and your angle of your v 2 dash right. So, if you if you look into this that v 2 dash i 2 dash cos phi 2. So, v 2 dash is 192.5 i 2 dash 20 magnitude and cos your angle of i 2 dash 36.9 and v 2 dash was your minus 2 degree right here 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 we have a your what you call v 2 dash is minus 2 degree and here it is your where is where is i 2 dash is minus 36.9 degree right. So, in this case so it will be difference only it will be cos minus theta cos theta both are lagging I mean I mean if you if you take the reference this is my reference this is my v 1 reference. So, one angle is 30 this angle is 36.9 degree and another angle is this angle is 2 degree. So, this is the angle right. So, it will be 36.9 minus 2 that is a power factor angle. So, that is why 36.9 to minus 2 degree right. So, that is why it is coming your what you call 3160 watt right and at the same time if you see this is the output at the same time if you make I 2 dash square R L because this is a load power this power is actually consumed by the load if you look into that 20 square into 7.9 it is 3160 watt. So, your answer is correct right. Now, input power is input that low voltage side V 1 current is I 1 cos phi 1. So, V 1 is your uh, low 200 volt I 1 we compute 200 by your 20.9 and phi 1 will be your 30 or what you call that angle between uh, I mean if you come to the angle of I 1 here minus 38 degree and the v or that way V 1's angle is 0 it is reference phase. So, it is cos 38 degree. So, that is why it is cos 38 degree it is 3300 watt. So, efficiency will be output by input. So, 3160 upon 330. So, 95.75 percent right. So, this is the efficiency of the transformer. Transformer efficiency actually is very high right. So, another one is that a 500 kVA this is its full load rating right 500 kVA transformer 2200 your 500 volt. So, high voltage side 2200 low voltage side is 500 volt 50 hertz frequency is 50 hertz single phase transformer has 10 percent impedance 10 percent means it is dimensionless that means 0.1 I will show you how we can do it right. Uh, it has resistance is given its resistance is given 0.01 ohm you have to find out the impedance value percentage resistance and percentage reactance, but it percentage your what you call impedance is given 0 0.10. So, how one can do it just listen carefully that how you can do it. So, because similar type of problem later you will get it. So, one can do it very easily. Right. First you find out the full load current because this is your what you call full load kVA 500 kVA this is rated kVA. So, this is 500 into 1000 so volt ampere and divided by 500 volt the low voltage side right this is full load current at the low voltage side because 500 volt on the low voltage side right. So, similarly if you want high voltage side you can divide by your what you call you can divide by 2200, but our say we are trying to find out on the low voltage side. So, it is 1000 ampere right therefore, base impedance will be j it is called z b when base impedance right it will be v 2 
by I 2 F L. So, low voltage side voltage is 500, this is rated voltage and full load current is 1000 ampere. So, this is my base impedance, right? Based on that percentage is determined actually, percentage resistance, percentage reactance, percentage impedance is determined. So, this is my Z V is equal to V 2 upon I 2 F L. So, 500 by 1000. So, half ohm. So, now let impedance is Z, right? Therefore, percentage impedance will be Z upon Z B. If you assume transformer impedance is Z, then Z by Z B will be your percentage impedance, it is dimensionless quantity. Because this Z in ohm, this Z base is also ohm. So, Z by Z B is a dimensionless quantity. So, it will be Z divided by Z base is half. So, 2 Z say in this case and it is given base impedance is given 0 0.1 that is that means percentage impedance actually given 0 0.1. So, 2 Z is equal to 0 0.1 therefore, Z is equal to as uh, uh, your what you call you find out 0 0.05 ohm because here impedance is late impedance is Z right. So, this actually this is actually Z ohm it is ohm right and this is ohm this is ohm. So, it is a dimensionless quantity. So, 2 Z is equal to 0 0.1. So, so whatever whatever value we will get that is Z actually in ohmic value. So, 0 0.05 ohm. Now, percentage resistance we know that R upon R, R upon Z B right. So, percentage so R is given 0 0.01 ohm right. So, because this R 1 actually uh, this R actually it is given 0 0.01 ohm and Z B we have got it half ohm. So, this is actually percentage resistance is 2 percent right 0 0.01 by half. So, 0 0.02 so it is 2 percent right and therefore, x is equal to your we know no x square uh, just hold on we know x square plus r square is equal to z square right. Therefore, my x is equal to root over z square minus r square that here, here it is used right. So, it is 0 0.05 and it is 0 0.01. So, you are getting 0 0.049 ohm that is that is x value and percent reactance will be again divided by Z B because this is ohm this is also ohm 0 0.049 by half. So, it is 9 point 8 percent or 0 0.098 per unit right. So, this is how one can calculate your this thing. This exercise you do it finding out your what you call that rather than low voltage side uh, full load current you will find out that your what you call a high voltage side full load current and base impedance and try to do it and see you know what, what you get uh, whether you get identical thing or not right. So, this is your this thing now losses and efficiency. So, in a transformer different types of losses are there, but what we will do actually we will come our main concern will be that iron loss that is coal loss that is eddy current and hysteresis loss together and the copper loss that is the I square R loss in the winding resistance right. So, coal loss these are hysteresis and eddy current losses, coal loss is, is, is constant for a transmission uh, sorry transformer operated as constant voltage and frequency, if voltage is constant frequency is constant. So, coal loss is more or less constant because we have seen eddy expression for eddy current and hysteresis loss. So, generally variation of voltage or frequency is negligible. So, we will consider that this loss is very basically constant coal loss right and copper loss that is I square R loss right. So, this loss occurs in winding resistances when the transformer carries the load current. So, actually transformer if load varies transformer current I varies therefore, this copper loss is a variable loss right. All the time load is not constant hence the current is not constant therefore, this copper loss is a variable loss. So, when the transformer carries the load current copper loss varies as the square of the loading expresses the ratio of the full load. So, generally that uh, that uh, your actually if I, I varies therefore, uh, your loading also varies right load also varies. So, so sometimes we express a square of square of the ratio of the full load rather, right later we will see that. Now, other type of losses which we will not consider in our study, but for our your uh, general knowledge right sometimes load or stray loss we call it largely results for your from leakage fields inducing eddy currents in the tank wall and the conductors right. Another thing we call dielectric loss, the seat of this loss actually is in the insulating materials particularly oil and solid insulators right, the insulations right. So, so major losses so we will consider copper loss uh, sorry coal loss or iron loss that is W I will assume it is a constant loss because we assume the voltage and frequency will remain constant. Another is copper loss it is a variable loss right, because if load changes then your what you call 
that current changes. So, it is, it is a variable loss right. So, so copper loss in the two winding transformer are I 2 square R 1 plus I 2 square R 2. I mean we have seen the equivalent circuit of the transformer. I am going back to one circuit right. I am going back to one circuit that your copper loss in the transformer just hold on right. Uh, just hold on we will go, go back to the circuit. just hold on instead of uh, drawing it I will go back to that here right not here uh, when primary and secondary comes right here here right. So, the, the this uh, this side uh, actually this is taken to this side right I will uh, I will I will uh, hold on hold on better better just hold on I will draw it for you I will draw it for you it I have to search it again. I will go back, I will draw it for you. Just hold on. Ah, I will draw it for you rather than searching. Right. So, if you if you draw the circuit, if you draw the circuit, so this is this is your what you call my co your this is coal loss component and this is my magnetizing loss component, right. And this is this is your primary side say and this side you have your what you call R 1 say and you have x 1 right and this is your primary side winding and the secondary side winding right if you suppose uh, uh, how I can accommodate this uh, is just hold on, hold on let me clear it let me clear it I, I am making it here just see uh, just see that whether it is you are understanding or not. So, this is my R and it's because of space constraint. So, this is my R and th this is your this thing. This side is the primary side right. So, this is the current I 1, this is the current I 0 and this side current is say we are taking I 2 dash and this is my primary winding right and this is my R 1 and my secondary winding is this one. So, this side is R 2, this is X 2 and here load is there say. So, this is R 2 and current flowing through this is I, I 2. So, here loss on the total loss is. So, magnitude are that I 2 square into R 1 plus your magnitude here I 2 magnitude into R 2 this is the total copper loss right real power loss. So, so let me clear it. So, this is what we are writing that your I 2 dash square R 1 right A plus I 2 dash square R 2 that total copper loss. So, in this case you just take your what you call I 2 dash square common. So, it will become R 2 plus I 2 dash upon I 2 square into R 1 right. So, we, we know that I 2 dash by I 2 is equal to N 2 by N 1 earlier we have seen it. So, we just substitute here if you substitute that it will be R 2 and we know we have see we have taken you know, throughout our this uh, transformer thing k is equal to N 1 upon N 2. So, therefore, if k is equal to N 1 upon N, 1 upon N 2 it will be R 2 plus R 1 upon k square into I 2 square. Therefore, copper loss will be say R e 2 into I 2 square. This R e 2 actually is the equivalent resistance referred to the secondary side, resistance referred to the secondary side. If you take on the primary side, same thing, in that case it will be R 1 plus your k square into R 2, right. But we have made it on the referred to the secondary side. This is the copper loss, right. This R e 2 into I 2 square and this is R e 2. So, now let us say say x is equal to I 2 upon I L because we are doing on the secondary side because load is placed on the your secondary side right. So, say I 2 upon I 2 F L, I 2 F L is the full load current. Just now we took an example you know, to compute the full load current on the secondary side that is 500, 500 kV a transformer we got 1000 ampere just now we did uh, we do one problem. So, same thing mathematically if you write x is equal to I 2 upon I 2 into I 2 F L, I 2 F L stands for full load. So, I 2 F L is the full load current that is on the secondary side right. So, I 2 is equal therefore, from this equation I 2 is equal to x into I 2 F L right. Now, from equation 1 and 2, so you will get copper loss is equal to R E 2 because R E 2 into I 2 square. So, I here you are putting I 2. So, R E 2 into x I 2 F L square right. So, copper loss will be x square into your I 2 square F L into R E 2 this is the copper loss. Now, the, the, Therefore, we can assume we can write that copper loss is equal to x square into W c, W c is equal to I 2 square F L R e 2 it is called full load copper loss. 
So, W c is the full load copper loss right. So, x your what you call that I 2 square F L R E 2 is W c it is called full load copper loss, uh, copper loss. So, your copper loss then x your what you call copper loss is equal to x square into W c. Now, that is why I have written W c is equal to this much full load copper loss. Now, output of the transformer. So, it will generally V 2 I 2 cos phi 2 right. Now, your V 2 is there and I 2 is equal to x into I 2 full load that you substitute the value of I 2 is equal to x into I 2 f L. So, x V 2 I 2 f L cos your uh, th theta 2 uh, phi 2 right. Uh, so, in this case I 2 is equal to x into I 2 f L. So, that means output is equal to x into your P f L. So, P f L actually full load output right. So, that is that is your what you correct for example, uh, for example, suppose if 500 kV and power factor is given, so you can find out PFL, right. So, basically PFL will be V2 into I2 FL into cos phi 2. So, that is your full load output. We also uh, got the current no for 500 kV transform, kV was given, that is why, but if you want power in terms of what, so V2 into I2 FL into cos phi 2, that is the full load output, right, and output is equal to x into P F L right. I mean if x is 1 then output is equal to your full load output right. Other, uh, uh, otherwise if uh, your x varies then naturally output will vary and it will have it will ha in and it happens for transformer because throughout the day load is changing. So, therefore, input is equal to output plus loss. So, this is my output x P F L right plus losses. So, input is equal to output plus coal loss plus copper loss both you have to consider. So, input is equal to then x into P F L the output plus W i the coal loss or iron loss we call right this W i equal iron loss or coal loss plus x square W c. So, this is equation 5. So, efficiency is output by input. So, efficiency can be written as x into P f L this is the output divided by the whole term the input right. Now, for maximum efficiency you will take d zeta upon d x is equal to 0. If you say d zeta upon d x is equal to 0 you will see iron loss is equal to copper loss. Therefore, for maximum efficiency that this condition you have to keep it in your mind for solving numericals for maximum efficiency iron loss is equal to copper loss right. But you this derivative you please do yourself you will get this answer. So, therefore, for maximum efficiency coal loss is equal to copper loss this is the thing. Now, therefore, new max is equal to if you put W i is equal to your x square W c right that means, x square W c is equal to W i if you put in this expression x square w c is equal to w i, then it will become x p f l divided by x p f l plus 2 w i that is what is written here the maximum efficiency x p f l upon x p f l plus 2 w i right. So, this is the all for maximum efficiency of a transformer now all the efficiency of a transformer it has one formula we will take one numerical for that you will understand that understand the thing all the efficiency is equal to output of transformer in kilowatt hour in 24 hours right divided by input to transformer in kilowatt hour in 24 hours right. So, iron loss constant and your constant and present during all the 24 hours. So, whatever iron loss will be there it will remain constant and 24 hours. So, whatever iron loss will be there multiply by 24 throughout the day this much of kilowatt hour your what you call in terms of kilowatt hour iron loss will get and copper loss vary as square of the load current from hour to hour varies right. So, copper loss variable, but iron loss will remain constant. We will see when we will take one example, right. Now, another thing is the voltage regulation. This is very simple thing. The secondary terminal voltage changes, right, with the change in the load due to the change in the voltage drop across the winding resistance and leakage reactance. If you leave load changes, then naturally voltage drop on the secondary side will change. So, the right. Therefore, the voltage regulation of transformer is defined as the net change in the secondary terminal voltage from no load to full load right. So, from no load to full load expressed as percentage of his rated voltage right. That means, voltage regulation is this is your V 2 0 the no load and this is V 2 F L the full load divided by V 2 F L into 100 this is the voltage regulation. So, it is the net change in the secondary terminal voltage from no load to full load expressed as a percentage of rated voltage. So, this is my voltage regulation right. Now, what is V 2 0 what is V 2 F L? So, your V 2 F your V 2 0 that is the secondary voltage when load is thrown off that is V 2 0 is equal to E 2 that means, when load is not there say 
say say no load condition right and V 2 F L is full load secondary voltage it is assumed to be adjusted to the rated secondary voltage right. So, voltage regulation is a figure of merit of a transformer for an ideal transformer voltage regulation is 0 because in that case your V 2 0 is equal to your V 2 F L I mean uh, same thing because for ideal transformer right. So, in that case regulation is 0 uh, for an ideal transformer. So, so, smaller is the voltage regulation better is the operation of the transformer right. So, that means uh, voltage across the terminal of the load will be better right. Now, if you look into the circuit like this, so this is my E 2 is equal to this is an ideal transformer as if uh, nothing is here ex except winding. So, this is E 2 is equal to V 2 0 and this is R E 2 X E 2 your what you call that uh, your um, secondary resistance and reactance this is the current I 2 and V 2 is the voltage across the your load right. So, assume equivalent circuit refer to this one then R E 2 actually will be R 2 plus R 1 upon k square right. So, R 2 plus R 1 upon k square and x e 2 is x 2 plus x 1 upon k square right. So, this is your what you call the approximate equivalent circuit referred to secondary sun branches are negligible I mean we have approximated it sun branch everything is approximated it is neglected right. So, R e 2 x e 2 expression you know all this right. So, this is your what you call the voltage regulation. Now, then another one is now for voltage regulation expression for different power factor say case 1 we consider unity power factor load. When load is unity power factor it is purely resistive right. If it is purely resistive then your current I 2 and V 2 both are in phase right. If both if both the, if these uh, two things both are in phase right. So, this is my this is my voltage V 2 and this is your and uh, voltage drop across resistance I 2 into R E 2 right. So, and as it is a unity power factor load. So, your uh, your uh, your the, this is this is my I 2 and V 2 both will be in phase right and this is another thing is the I 2 R E 2 drop also you add because E 2 is equal to if you if you just look look into this that E 2 is equal to your V 2 plus I 2 R E 2 plus J I 2 X E 2 right. So, as J I 2 X T 2 means it will be 90 degree from here to here and this is my voltage E 2 and this is my delta right. So, that means that means my E 2 your what you call E 2 E 2 square will be equal to V 2 plus I 2 R E 2 square plus I 2 X E 2 square under root right. So, that is why your v E 2 square is equal to V 2 plus I 2 R E 2 square plus I 2 X E 2 square that means your uh, that means E 2 is equal to square root of this one. Now, as an approximation you can write for the E 2 now E 2 now another thing we can write the E 2 cos delta is equal to V 2 plus I 2 R E 2 that also we can write E 2 cos delta is equal to. So, that is why you have written E 2 cos delta is equal to V 2 plus I 2 R E 2. Now, if delta approximately is equal to 0 say that means cos delta is 1 therefore, approximately E 2 approximately is equal to V 2 plus I 2 R E 2 or we can write E 2 minus V 2 upon V 2 right is equal to I 2 into R E 2 upon V 2 right or we can write we, we uh, have just seen no E 2 is equal to V 2 0 therefore, V 2 0 minus V 2 upon V 2 is equal to I 2 R E 2 V 2 right. So, this is the expression of the your what you call the regulation right. Similarly, for lagging power factor load this is for unity power for lagging for lagging power factor load that means current lagging power factor load means current is lagging. So, this is my current secondary current I 2 is lagging from V 2 by an angle phi 2 right. So, in that case your what you call this is the current is lagging. So, along, along this it will be drop will be I 2 R E 2 and then I 2 X E 2 will be this one right and this angle is 90 degree look at the this angle is 90 degree and this is your E 2 this is your E 2 and angle between V 2 and E 2 is delta here it is delta right. Now, you make all uh, horizontal and vertical projection. So, this portion look at the cursor I am not marking by ink look at the cursor here will be I 2 R E 2 cos phi 2 because this is phi 2 this angle is phi 2 therefore, from the simple geom geometry this is angle is also phi 2 right this angle will be also your what you call phi 2 right you look at the cursor you, you can do it by simple geometry therefore, this portion is I 2 R E 2 cos phi 2 and from here to here it is I 2 X E 2 sin phi 2 look everything I have marked and this whole vertical line this angle is phi. So, it will be your phi 2. So, it will be I 2 X E 2 cos phi 2 right 
and this portion this portion vertical if you see that this portion i 2 r e 2 sin phi 2 right. So, this is simply your what you call it simple geomet geometry you can make it out all these things right. So, not much to explain because we have seen your single phase circuit phasor diagram everything right. So, with this if you make this is a so therefore, this triangle your what you call if you make it is a your what you call that your right right uh, this uh, your uh, this triangle if you consider I mean this portion and this portion if you consider. So, e 2 square will be v 2 plus i 2 r 2 cos phi 2 plus i 2 x e 2 sin phi 2 whole square right plus i 2 x e 2 cos phi 2 minus i 2 r e 2 sin phi 2 square right. So, if you if you look into this that if you look into this that this has been written this is e 2 square is equal to this one. So, from which e 2 will get now as an approximation also you can write e 2 cos delta right e 2 e 2 cos delta I mean I mean I mean uh, I mean this one I mean e 2 e 2 cos delta I mean this part this portion is equal to my v 2 plus i 2 r 2 cos phi 2 plus i 2 x e 2 sin phi 2 right. So, that is that is uh, your what we have written here what we have written here right this is the equation. Now, assuming delta is very small equal to 0. So, cos delta is equal to 1 therefore, e 2 is equal to v 2 plus this term right or, or you can write e 2 minus v 2 upon v 2 is equal to this one you take i 2 common. So, it will be v 2 0 minus v 2 upon v 2 is equal to i 2 r e 2 cos phi 2 plus x e 2 sin phi 2 upon v 2 right. So, uh, therefore, base impedance we have just seen base impedance secondary side it is v 2 upon i 2 on the secondary side. So, z b stands for your base impedance and 2 stands for secondary side. So, z b 2 is equal to v 2 upon i 2. Therefore, this equation this equation r e 2 cos phi 2 plus x e 2 sin phi 2 divided by v 2 upon i 2 we can write and that v 2 i 2 uh, v 2 upon i 2 is equal to z b 2 right. So, that is z b 2 therefore, we can write v 2 0 minus v 2 upon v 2 r e 2 upon z b 2 cos phi 2 plus x e 2 upon z b 2 sin phi 2 that means, let us define this is r e t per unit that means, dimensionless quantity if t u means per unit right per unit. So, r e 2 upon z b 2 and x e 2 per unit is x e 2 per unit is equal to x e 2 upon z b 2 and I have written here it is per unit. Therefore, v 2 0 minus v 2 upon v 2 the voltage regulation in terms of your uh, your uh, your percentage that is r e 2 per unit into cos phi 2 plus x e 2 per unit sin phi 2 very simple it is just little bit your uh, practice is necessary. Thank you very much we will be back again.